friend. I'm glad to see you made it. For we have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's a law. Here we are working on Proverbs chapters 11 and 12. And uh, we're just about finished with chapters 11. Moving in to chapter 12 today. And uh, again, there's this great reminder of how to walk in this world with discernment. With discernment, and if we have discernment, if we know what the the ways of the devil and what it is the devil's trying to do, or demons and, and all those bad forces and things that are unseen, and it comes to us and ma manifests itself in a seen world or reality, right? We we know how to deal with it. You know that's the thing we, we've all confessed. We we all have sin. All right, so so we're not trying to condemn sin. God has already condemned sin, and, and God condemns sin through natural law, natural order. Right? We we don't have to make a law to to say or decide in our own hearts and minds murdering people is bad. Right? We don't have to have a law, even though we got laws written down, and we throw bad people in prison. Right? We, we really don't need that law. You know, so we, when we break these laws, when we sin, there's an effect. So there's a cause and effect to all of our choices. Right? And that's what we see in Proverbs. If we walk likened to Jesus Christ, we see it. If we seek good and all these things, right, we, we will be delivered. And we will be delivered from, from the wrath, from the punishment. All right, so that's the thing is uh, recognizing that, that these tools, these teachings and instructions are a good way to live our lives. In these teachings and instructions, this is what creates chivalry, <laughs> a, a, a knight of shining armor. And, and we know that our armor is no longer a, a armor of warfare, but it, but it's like the priestly armor of God's kingdom, right? And we have the helmet of salvation, a breastplate, but one of righteousness, right? A shield, but one of faith. A sword, but one of words. And so that's what we see here is putting these words to action, putting our sword to action. And it's not, as the Muslims would want you to believe, uh, the beheading of innocent people. That that's wrong sword, devil's sword, right? Devil is a father of lies and murder. So people who are lying and actively engaged in murder are sons of the devil. Now, let us get back into our our read and our teachings and instructions. Uh, chapter eleven, verse. 25 is where we left off from the last video and if you didn't catch it please try and find that video you know that's how do we bring ancient teachings and instructions into our reality well we don't have to that's what we're going to find out uh solomon is a thousand years before jesus right so so three thousand years from today these words still apply to our life, and, and how? Well, they weren't cavemen. They weren't monkeys. They had every bit of wisdom and knowledge we have today. <clears throat> where did we? How did we get to where we are today? Jesus Christ, right? We go to the Roman time, two thousand years ago, a time of darkness, a time of violence and abuse, right? Look at where we are today. Look at look at our world today. Right? In the United States of America, right? The, the greatest country on earth. And if it's not good here, and the greatest on earth, uh, what's it like over there? Over there? Makes us, makes us wonder. And what is it that is driving this insanity? God. God. And why are we in a place of insanity? Because we don't believe in God. That, that's the curse. You know, frustration. That this is the curse. And it's all described in the book of Deuteronomy. 
This is what happens when you don't believe in God. This is how you know if you're walking under the curse. You're, you're frustrated. All right? you, you're uh, depressed. All, all these things are, are a result of not believing. You, you are envious. You never have enough. And, and in fact, you're always seeking the, the greener grass in, in your neighbor's yard or in, in that place or, or that place. Where you are is dead. Right? And that's all you can see. Right? Place of envy, strife. It's always their problem. The reason I'm having problems, I'm poor, or strife. And it's their problem. It's because of your abuse, because your unwillingness to believe in God or, or whatever it is. And, and sure, all those things are in our world and a part of our world, but we got to fight through it. We got to fight through the frustration and, and the setbacks and the engaging with the enemy all the time. And in here, we find out how to do that. Right? And first, if, if we would just acknowledge God in our presence, in our lives, in our world, and not just the presence of the church. You know, one of the problems with today is we, we believe that I got to go to church and make my prayer request to the church people. And then God will answer that prayer, right? In searching, grasping at the wind. If God isn't going to answer your prayer, which is prayed out and prayed out in, in secret in your home, in a locked door where nobody can enter or see, if he's not going to answer that one, he certainly is not going to answer your prayer at church. Because Jesus Christ is your intercessor. At the church, not the pastor, not the prayer team. Jesus Christ is your intercessor. That, that's how you get to, to be in the presence of God, is with Jesus in your presence. And two or two or more are gathered. There he is, right? <clears throat> that could be you and the Holy Spirit. That's two. And that's all you need. Right? Trust. So let's begin our reading. It says, <clears throat> whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and the one who waters will himself be watered. Right? Some people scatter seeds, right? And they just leave little tracks around, and <clears throat> little pieces of, of scripture around everywhere. We see it in the Google world or, or internet world, and all over, you know, people are just handing out tracts, little one sentences of good encouragement from the Bible, and uh, that's planting seeds. Now another guy comes and he makes an hour-long video about how to grow that seed, and that's, that's water. That's water, and you get watered, but only God can make it grow. You know, everybody says Jesus has been coming for 2,000 years, and yet has never came. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, he has come, and, and he came in the flesh. He has come, and that's the part where, in our lives, can we believe that, that Jesus would, would be see us worthy to, to hang out with us and, and to live with us? Jesus Christ is the spirit of revelation. Right? He's a spirit. God is spirit and the Holy Spirit. Right? And, and Jesus Christ is the Son of God which gives revelation to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin right? and comforts us. Right? If we had no sin, we, we are not of God. We are not one of God's children. So the man who says, I have no sin, well, oh, that's the liar right there, right? He who brings blessings will be enriched. Jesus Christ came to bless. He says, hey, I, this is what I come for. And, and the first things he says after the resurrection is, peace be with you. Shalom, peace, peace, right? This is the blessing Jesus Christ comes to give peace, peace, peace between us and God. 
Inside of that peace, we find rest. Rest. God's will is that we would rest with him. Be content with him. See, see, you see, it's today. That's, that's why Jesus never comes. It'll never be tomorrow. It is today, the last day. I'm not waiting to die. I'm waiting for Jesus. Some of us will never die. We are an eternal, immortal being. And we believe that. So we're not waiting for death. We're waiting for Jesus. Right? So, so he is coming. Some are waiting to die. And for you, that could be a reality. Because God, Jesus says, here I come with my reward. And I will repay you for everything you have done on earth. All right, so, so whatever you have done to others, it's going to be done to you, right? I'm waiting for death, and I don't believe in God. And that could be because there is no God for you or Savior for you. And God gives to you exactly what you've been waiting for, right? And he gives that to you. Same for those who are waiting and have their hope in Jesus. Right? And this is what Jesus comes with his reward to bring. And it's peace and rest. Peace and rest. Right? Rest in peace. Oh, that's what they put on the graves. Whoa! Wonder where they got that from. Might have been the Bible. Right? Where is he resting? in peace. <laughs> See, and, and so God is trying to remove things from us, the, the draws, our worries. He wants to remove your worries. What causes worry? Sin. Sin. Sin is an error. Sin is believing in, in the liar, this man who says he has no sin. Right? I could be that man. You could be that man. Woman. It says, people curse the people, curse him who holds back gain. But a blessing is on the head of him who sells it. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, right? And why are you talking about Jesus? Because the whole Bible talks about Jesus. And Jesus comes and what does he do? He purchased you. Jesus bought you with the blood of his his own body purchased. So whatever gain he had, he sold it in order to buy you because the gain or the inheritance of Jesus Christ, everlasting life on God's throne, right hand of God. And he sells out that inheritance for you. He purchases us, right? And in that, he's blessed. He's blessed, and because he's blessed, we are blessed with him, right? <clears throat> now, what about the prodigal son? We see that right there as well, right? People curse him who holds back gain, but a blessing is on the head of him who sells it. And the God, right, in the story of the prodigal son, the father gives half of the inheritance to his son. So he doesn't hold black back anything. Right? And he gives that and he goes and he wastes it. And he sells it. Same like Jesus. Wastes everything. Everything God gave to him. He, he sells it and he's wasting it on wild living. He's wasting it on people who are uh, entrenched in wild living. Right? Us. All of us. But we see in, in the prodigal son that, that when he turns back to God, he's blessed. Whoever diligent, diligently seeks good seeks favor, right? Or acceptance. Who's always diligent, diligently seeks good, seeks favor. But evil comes to him who searches for it. 
evil comes to those who search for it. Maybe, maybe today in this world, our, our, our main focus is exposing the Antichrist, right? So, so all my focus is on evil and the works of evil and what are those evil people doing? Right? And I'm going to, as soon as I know, and I see, I'm going to expose the Antichrist. And, and yet, we take all of our time and our energy is focused on the works of the devil, as though the devil has this great power. And, and we're always focused there, and, and now all of a sudden I'm afraid of my neighbors, the government, the police, the army, the president. I'm afraid to go outside. And God giving to us, each one of us, exactly the reward we've been seeking for. I seek out rumors of wars. I'm, I'm afraid because there's, there's nothing out there but war, death, violence. Giving to us exactly what we want, what we desire, what we're seeking. Right? Some people are so afraid that the world is going to be thrown into hell. It, it could be because that person itself, who is afraid. And God says, I will give to you exactly what you fear the most. I fear the most is going to hell. And I give that to you. I fear the most God. Okay, I give that to you. Right? If I, He says, fear me, God. Love me with all your heart, might, and soul. Alright? And it will give you that. Whoever trusts in his riches will fall. You, you will fall. We know today that there are doctors and people who have devoted their lives to becoming surgeons and, and doctors, nurses, right? Neurologists. All these chiropractors, all these different things, and every one of them has a, has a headstone waiting for them. None can escape death, cancer, sickness. No, no college degree or, or amount of riches is going to keep you from dying, right? Even if you give to the insurance man $400,000, it's not going to keep you from dying, right? It's going to make you really upset when, when you're broke and, and you sold out your, your children and, and the inheritance of your children for a moment of, of time. And then come find out that, that you still couldn't escape the thing you feared the most. Goes on to say, Whoever, <clears throat> But the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. Faith. Righteous is faith. Those who have faith in God will flourish like a green leaf. Right? Do not be overcome by what you see, but be overcome by what you believe in. One day God will wipe away all your tears. Every one. And be ready for that day. Whoever troubles his own house, hold, will inherit the wind. A fool will be servant to the wise of heart. Right? Paul says, I am a fool because... Why does Paul say he's a fool and why were the apostles fools? Because by faith, they had every right to go buy a little house or a shanty or a cabin out in the middle of the wilderness and live their lives in obscurity. By, by right, by faith, that they had that right. Yet, as a fool, they, they couldn't mind their own business. We're, we're supposed to be minding our own business, living a quiet life. But sin and the effects of sin are so great. I no longer could live a quiet life, minding my own business, so I got involved. And, and who, who benefited from that? Their, their involvement. We did, right? We, we have been saved by their willingness to become fools, to be subject, subjected to public shame, right? To live their lives 
in, in dressed in rags and homelessness, but, but in their heart and minds, walked as though they were kings. Walked as though they were men of nobility. But those who trouble their own household will inherit the wind. Oh, I kind of understand that and those things, you know. Uh, I know when I turned my life to Jesus or to the preaching of the gospel of Jesus, it's been very tough for everybody to kind of grasp on. And, and you know, that that's pastor's job. Let's, let's go to church you want to hear those things or, or go listen to that guy. But as for you, you know, just, just, just be quiet and live a quiet life and well sure I could and yeah I'm the biggest fool in, in town but uh, it's for the benefit of those yet to be born or them yet to come you know who knows you may have seen this video five years after I have produced it or made it right and this message was waiting for you the seed had been planted all I needed was water now I'm able to grow. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Right? Jesus, tree of life. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Jesus says, I come to give you authority, and this is the authority I've given you, to bear fruit. Righteousness, tree of life, to bear faith. How's our faith proven? How's our faith shown? Well, it's proven through the testings and the trials when, when the devil comes. Are you sure you're the Son of God? Are you sure? Because if you were the Son of God, you'd bow down to me. Right? And Jesus, no. You bow down to the Lord your God. Right? And, and that's where faith is proven. Well, I believe it. I believe it because I know it's true. And whoever captures souls is wise. Whoever captures souls is wise. And that's exactly what Jesus comes to do. Give to you the right to eat from the tree of life. That right. By faith. You have the right to be called God's sons and daughters by faith. Not, not by the works of men or uh, not by being born into a bloodline of genealogy, but by faith. By faith. That, that is righteous. If the righteous is repaid on earth, how much more the wicked and the sinner? Right? If we're repaid, you know, and what's our first installment of the payment of right, being righteous? It's the, the Holy Spirit. That's the gift. And if we're rewarded here on earth with the gift, with the promise, with the knowledge of knowing we are secure in the hand of God. Right? And if we're repaid... And if Jesus says, I'm coming, and where am I coming? I'm coming right here to earth. And I will have in my hand my reward. Right? And whoever captures souls is wise. There's no greater wisdom on earth than, than the knowledge that we have in Jesus Christ. And to the revelation of why did God create this world? In us, and why have we been put into a world filled with sin? Right? That's a great question, ain't it? And the answer is because the devil and one third of the angels challenged God. They sinned against God, wanted to destroy God, wanted to make himself God, the creation, and so it was cast out of God's presence. And God's punishment to the devil was making you, the, the human being, into God's image. He gave to us, an unworthy, unrighteous people, the right to be called God's son. And there's not an angel in 
in creation or anything in creation that's ever been deemed by God to be my son outside of the human race. And, and that's the thing. What are we learning? Right? Sin is disgusting. And it stinks. And, and the Bible says in uh, Isaiah, they will say from 10,000 years from now, wow, when we look to the earth, I, apparently you can see the earth from heaven. And when we look to the earth and, and the stench and the stink floating up like a green fog, ooh, sin sucks. I would never challenge God or his authority. God is, is God, and I am more than thankful than to be a part of God's creation life, his world. And there it is. We're learning how to not sin. We're learning how to live with the Holy God for an entire eternity where there is no sin. There is none. And you don't even have the option or the choice to sin because it doesn't exist. And I know that's like, in a world full of sin, how, how could I ever imagine that? And that's the, the, the great surprise or the great gift that God's willing to give to us. It is nothing in this world, nothing that your mind can imagine is in heaven. It's beyond that beyond that. And if we could love God in the midst of this, well, great is our reward going to be when we get into that. So, so it's about love. Teaching us through discipline, through, through our own ways, how to love not only ourselves, but, but God. How to love God. <coughs> And how much more are the wicked paid? Or, or the sinner? Right? And they are repaid. You know, people are homeless. And it's not because they choose to be homeless. But, but it's probably because of the choices they made that were inside of sin and didn't realize that there was going to be an, a cause and an effect. Right? And, and what made me homeless, my love, desire for crack, or cocaine, or drugs. And what created that desire, as we wonder, because we're not to judge anyone or to condemn anyone, but it could have been abuse. It could have been the encounter they had with the devils and, and the demons of this world, which broke them down, whose sin is greater. The one who sins or, or the one who taught you how to sin or created the sin, right? Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates repro reproof is stupid. A good man abstains favor from the Lord, but a man of evil devices he condemns. Right? He who loves discipline. There's many people who sell their lives to drugs and, and alcohol, wind up homeless, find Christ, find God in the gutter, turn their lives around, become fathers and mothers and good members of the community. Others go 20, 30, 40 years and, and never get the help they wanted, the help they're seeking for. Maybe they don't want no help can't help or care anyone until they want it. I, I don't have a problem with being homeless, so I don't need to change my life. And for them, maybe that, that's okay. You know, but, but in that, God is always trying to discipline us. You know, one of the reasons you're out uh, outside of the community is your inability to function with the rest of us. And that's grievous. It's, it's not good for men to be alone. And yet their people are alone.
it says, A good man abstains favor from the Lord, or obtains favor from the Lord. But a man of evil devices, he condemns. Right? Men love devices. Devices, things. And we really love devices and things that can talk to us, right? And that's why we love the iPhones and the smartphones and the computer stuff. Not only is it a device, it interacts with me. The rest of the world has thrown me away, but, but here in this world, right, it interacts with me. It even kind of likes me. Well, <laughs> and we create a fantasy world. We love the devices, right? We love cars. We, we love, you know, airplanes, refrigeration. We love things, electricity. Love money. These things condemns us. No one is established by wickedness. But the root of righteousness will never be moved. Jesus Christ is the root. He is divine. We are the branches. So long as Jesus Christ is the root and, and the vine, He will never be removed. Our faith will never be removed. No matter what comes upon us from out the world, those who are righteous, full of faith, their, their faith cannot be broken, will not be broken. No amount of punishment, no cancer, no sickness will break their faith and that's a gift from God because he is the root an excellent wife is the crown of her husband right that's that's a real cool thing I have a, a good wife a, and not only a good woman or a wife but a best friend that's that makes a wife good this is my best friend you know, when I'm happy, they're happy. When I'm sad, they're sad. Right? When I'm on top of the world, they're, they're right there at my right hand. There's no greater gift to a man than, than his wife. Now, what about Jesus Christ who says the church is my wife, my bride? Who's the church? Well, you are the building that God made to house his spirit, the church. You, each one of us, each one of us, and God makes us his, or his wife, right? His bride. And, and an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, an excellent wife. <laughs> so if we were all living in excellency, that, that's just a, another, uh, you know, the glory of God shining through us just shows how much greater God is in the world. And, and that's the thing we should be thinking about in our lives. But she, she who brings shame is like rottenness in his bones. What if we were the pride of Christ? And yet we loved sin so much that we walked in it to the point where we were a cloud of stench. What does Jesus say? Oh, God, sorry about my wife. Right? And that's the thing. When we live in sin, we're not tarnishing ourselves. We're tarnishing Jesus Christ. And the evidence of it is Jesus says, If you live in sin, I have nothing left to do but show you my back. I will turn my face from you. And when we see the back of Christ... We see nothing but welts, nothing but, but beat down, the stripes. By his stripes, we have been healed. But when we live in sin, when we tarnish the image of Christ, we, we are crucifying him all over again. And, and that's why we, we got to some point in our life say, wow, sin stinks. It stinks so bad I can no longer participate in it. Smells. Right? 
And if we could recognize that, that our sin grieves Jesus Christ, he would turn back to us. And when his face shines on us, all right, then we will be blessed. You know, if we could recognize a good wife is a gift from God. Is a gift from God. And if we loved our wives as though it was a gift from God, it would probably go well with their family. Now, I love the fact that my, my favorite wife and loved one is Stephanie. And her name in English is the crowned one. That's what that name means, crowned one. And if you went to Hebrew, it, it, the name Stephanie is literally in Hebrew, the crown of David. David named his crown. Stephanie. <laughs> and each one of us have a choice to choose our own wife. So long as she's willing to choose you back. Right? I always think that's awesome. <laughs> the thoughts of the righteous are just. The counsel of the wicked are deceitful. Right? Counsel of the righteous, counsel of the faithful, faithful are seeking justice, mercy, love, kindness, encouragement. Counsel of the wicked is, is deceitful. It's going to counsel you to, to engage your enemy with weapons of war. War. You know, we, we can love our enemy from afar. I don't have to see you bow down to Jesus Christ. And, and you certainly don't have to bow down to me. And, and yet I, I can love you still. Right? Because Jesus says if anybody rejects you as being his, you have the right to, to walk away. You have the right to walk away. You don't have the right to, to engage in a fight or in a battle with your enemy, but you do have the right to walk away and you can even dust off the breath or the dust of their breath and the dust of their body. Just, just dust it off and say, hey, the kingdom of heaven was near to you and it would be better for those on the judgment day who lived in Sodom than it would be for those who reject God's salvation. And what is God's salvation? Anyone who rejects Jesus Christ as being both Lord and Savior. Right? And who is Jesus Christ Lord over? Me. Who is he the Savior of? Me. And if anybody rejects that, you have the right to walk away. You can love them from afar. You can trust in the fact that that Every knee and every tongue is going to confess one day that Jesus Christ is Lord, is God, is God. And it's not my decision, that it's not up to me. God gives me peace and rest. He goes on to say, The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood. They lie in wait for blood. The words of the wicked. The words of the wicked, they don't carry the, the sword of truth. They carry a Colt 45. And they lie in wait to shed blood. I, I'm not waiting for another unbeliever to walk into this church so I can convert him into Christianity. I'm waiting for him to screw up so I can shoot him. <clears throat> right? Many people believe this. The wicked lie in wait. How many people in the Google world or internet world, YouTube world, have fake identities, fake names lying in wait? And the moment you expose yourself as being a Christian, they come right in and attack you, but they attack you in secret, right? If you were at work where this person's identity is known, they would never 
treat you the way they treat you as they do when they're hiding and their identity is hidden. Like a lion hiding in the bushes, waiting for an unsuspected person to come and, and then pounces on them. Right? But, but Satan is like a roaring lion. And if you can't hear a roaring lion, and when you hear him, you kind of like, get out of the way, there's the, that lion who can't be hidden. <laughs> but the mouth of the upright delivers them. Delivers them. Jesus comes to deliver. To, to save. To heal. The wicked are overthrown and are no more. But the house of the righteous will stand. A man is condemned according to his sense, his good sense, is commended. A man is commended according to his good sense. But one of twisted mind is despised. Right? Another great example, Bill Cosby, a person of twisted mind who thinks or believes that they could do whatever they want in the power of secrecy, drugging women and then raping them, and then later becomes despised. The whole nation despises you. And all of that, if we thought about it, you know, everybody loved Bill Cosby when he was, you know, Huxtable, Mr. Dr. Huxtable, but, but when, when he became, you know, Bill the Molester, or Bill the Rapist, he was completely despised. And you can avoid all that. You can avoid all that by finding compassion, love, care for another human being outside of, uh, of the bed. He goes on to say, Better to be lowly and have a servant than to play the great man and lack bread. Right? Better to be lowly and have a servant than to play the great man and lack bread. Jesus became not only lowly and had servants, but, but he became the servant of servants. Right? He sold his right to own servants. Jesus said, hey, I, I don't call you servants. Right? And, and at one time he says, you know, uh, I call you friends. But, but after the resurrection, Jesus made it clear. Right? I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. And then he made it clear, hey, I'm going to give you a new name after the resurrection. I will no longer call you friends, but I will call you my brothers. My brothers. Right? Makes peace with God. One time servants, slaves, and then to relationship with friendship, to, to, to family, brother, equal. Better to, to be the servant than to be a great man and lack bread. What kind of bread? Manna, the heavenly bread. Whoever is righteous or whoever is faithful or has faith has regarded for the life of his beast. Has regard for the life of his beast. But the mercy of the wicked is cruel. Most, this is proven fact, most, uh, uh, serial killers start out with, with animals, mutilating animals, as though they, they had no being or, or, or lie. Right? There's other people that, that wouldn't even kill a bug, that, you know, they would have to take that bug outside, be, you know, before they could step on it, squish on it. I'm not one of those people. I'm afraid of bugs. <laughs> But, but what it is, though, is God, being the giver of life, gives life to everything. And, and if God saw the cricket as being worthy to have life, 
that and so should I. And many people protect animals, love animals, while others abuse them. Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits lacks slit sense. Right? And, and so that's the thing, too, is it's not always about planting and gardening farms. You know, the preacher or the pastor of a church or a gathering, he, he gets involved with the people. And in fact, you know, his main goal is, are, are you guys okay at home? This is what, what people of the Bible, okay, not American pastors, the people of the Bible, they, they would literally be involved into your daily life, weekly life. Not just, you know, like cult leader wanting to get down your wife's pants involved. But are you guys okay? Right? Are all your needs being met? You know, uh, how are you guys dealing with sin? We all have sin, but how are you dealing with it? You guys okay? Are you frustrated? Right? They, they get involved into people's lives. It's, it's not just a, a place of business. And you're not a customer. Been to some churches where they acted like the people of the, out there were customers. Where's all the customers? You know? Where's all the money? And we're not customers. We're human beings. Right? Some people pursue to, to build a, a, a you've got church on every corner. And <clears throat> we're going to take and gather the money of this great community. And as soon as we get a million dollars, we're going to buy another church. Right? And because, you know, we got all kinds of customers. <laughs> and then you lack sense. Right? We, we have a $250,000, $500,000 parking lot. And now for a congregation that is starving to death. Right? Well, uh, you know the answer to that. We're going to build a playground for the children. Because, you know, we need all you parents out there. Customers. Playground. Right? We don't build a farm. We're not a kingdom of being self-efficient. Right? We'll raise children to become doctors and nurses, but not for Christ's kingdom. You don't go to the church and give away your gifts for free. You go get a job. America government, you know, these things. And it's all turned out in our world to be a waste. A waste. Relationships are, are down, friendships are down, divorce is high. Nobody cares. Hearts are growing cold, love is dying. Not, not God's love, our love is dying. And it's dying everywhere. And here's the tragedy of it all is if we have no love, we, we have nothing. We have nothing. And we're seeing it in this world. We, we have been given devices. We've been given everything. There's no generation of people on earth or the earth's history that have had the things we got. And it ain't good enough. I mean, it won't give us happiness in all of it because in all of it, there ain't an ounce of love. There ain't an ounce of love. Same like the Muslims. There's two billion people every day bow down to a statue that can't even say to you good morning. They bow down to a, to a block of concrete. Doesn't care about you. Doesn't love you. Cannot respond to your aches and your pains. Good love is far from us anymore. We choose things over the people. Whoever is wicked <clears throat> covets the spoils of evil doers, but the root of the righteous bears fruit. The root of the righteous bears fruit. Jesus Christ is the root, is the vine. And we being the branches are the fruit he has bared. Right? Not to cover the covenant the spoils of evil doers. You know. 
that's the thing. We can't allow insurance companies and their $15 billion in profits of our pain and suffering to, to take away our joy. We can't allow that. And we don't want to be jealous of that or envious of, of what they're doing. Right? We can complain all day about the devil and the works of the devil and how he uses his works to, to benefit him. And that's what he does. And as perfect as God made the rhinoceros, he made the devil was perfect too. And he does his job perfectly. And so we, we, we could just turn to God and say, you know, God, I want to believe in you, and, and I don't want a $500,000 parking lot. Let, let's build a, 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 you know, a farm for the entire community of our believers so that when I go to Jen's house and I say, Jen, are your needs being met? And if she says no, I say, well, they are today because we have everything you need. And that would be awesome, right? But, but that comes through believing in the teachings and instructions of God. You know, somebody's got to take a step and do it first. And we see many people are breaking out of, you know, our, our, our normal society and going back to a more traditional way of life, like the Amish. And many people not, not selling out to the Amish community, but are becoming just like the Amish throughout all America. Land is running out. It's getting expensive. Right? And you see in, in country life, in small communities, you know, the care of, of the individuals in the community sometimes is more important than, than the riches they have. You know, it's better to have nothing than to have everything with, without God, love. We will bear fruit. An evil man is ensnared by the transgression of his lips. But the righteous escapes from trouble. Right? The evil man is ensnared by the, his lips. What does that mean? Well, if I claim to have no sin. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's a million people on earth sitting back waiting. Because the moment you sin, ha <laughs> ha! And there it all comes crumbling down on you. But, but if you just confessed... It'd end all the trouble. What? You've caught me doing what? What, what I was made to do? You know, it, it, all sinners and stiff-necked and rebellious, those are God's people. Right? From the fruit of his mouth, a man is satisfied with good. And the work of a man's hand comes back to him. Practice what you preach is exactly what he's saying. Oh, everybody in America can see the problems of the world and, and who's creating the problems. But nobody wants to be a part of the solution. Right? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's because we have so many good things and things and devices and stuff that make our lives so easy. We're unwilling to give that stuff up for righteousness, or justice, or for the well-being of your own family. I don't want to get hurt. Right? That's why I create a false identity in the social media world. Doing everything I can to avoid being hurt while telling you what you're doing wrong. Right? Practice what you preach is what he's saying. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Right? But the prudent ignores, oh, sorry, in his own eyes, but the wise man listens to advice. Some people are always waiting and ready to create an argument. Create an argument. Ready to, to expose your sin. Don't want to listen to a word you have to say. Don't want to create a relationship with you. Right? Everything I know is right. Without sin. Many people live this way. 
The vexation of a fool is known at once, but the prudent ignores an insult. So the vexation of a fool is known at once, right? They, they come to you with insults to, to discredit everything you say, to discredit your faith, to say Jesus Christ never existed. That all of this is created by a man, right? Well, it was a whole group of men over 6,000 years, and they collected all these things that people saw, and, you know, the people in this Bible, most of them never met or knew the other person. Yet they all described God, and they all described God in the exact same way. And, and who is God? Jesus Christ. The anointed one. They come to you with insults. Right? Many people, just if you have anything good to say, tear down. Tear you down. Start with your clothing and, and that, and then they go to your hair and your teeth and, and just begin always tearing you down, insulting you trying to shame you, make you feel guilty. But the prudent ignores it. Right? So when they come to you, this is what they're going to do. What do you do? I engage in a battle. Jesus says, do not resist evil. Do not hate your enemy. This is what you could do if you wanted. Turn and walk away. And Jesus gives you that right, that power and authority. You don't have to be right. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to prove Jesus Christ was real. My salvation isn't dependent upon your belief in my God. Whew, that releases free from a lot of burdens. That's the thing. And God doesn't have to prove to you he's real. He says, I, I love you just the way you are, and I know who you are. And yet I chose you anyway. I still chose you. Right? It's not about God proving to us. He loves us. He does. It's about us proving to the devil, ourselves, or God that we accept that love. I agree with you, and I believe in you. We'll stop right there today, guys, and we'll pick up next video, and we'll finish chapter 12, and then who knows where we'll go after that. You know, the Holy Spirit's like the wind, and you just float around wherever it may go, and you never know where that is. You know, that's the thing. Is just know that wherever we are, wherever you are, God is there. He's there waiting to heal you, waiting to carry you, waiting to give you peace, waiting to give you rest. All right. Let us end in prayer. Father, go into the hearts and minds of all those who are watching today and bless them with the presence of your Spirit. Rain your Holy Spirit into their homes. Fill their bodies full of joy, laughter, and amazement. Fill their homes full of love and mercy. Fill their homes full of yourself. Consume their days and their daily life with you. Fill them full of your love, your kindness, and your power to heal a broken spirit, a broken mind, and a broken body. We know we have not been forgotten. We have not been left behind and we will never be abandoned. We love you and we thank you. Most of all, that's what we do. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Singing hallelujah, glory hallelujah. Amen. Running there ever since I made a start. I made a start for Jesus, I'm brighter, just make my burden lighter. Jesus, love, just a
Father, so 